So hi, uh, Ian Finley here. This is the next in our series on playwriting. Uh, today we're going to be talking about this idea of setting. Now the setting is something that you've probably heard this term in your English classes, for example. Um, and it is the where and when that a story takes place. Um, the setting it comprises both of those elements. It's not just where it takes place, but also the time period. Because if it takes place, say, in a classroom, that classroom is going to be different in 2015 than it would have been in 1915, or 1815, or I don't know, 1615. Um, each of those changes in time changes that place. So when you're thinking about setting, um, think about both the where it takes place and the when it takes place. Because both of these elements of setting are going to affect how the characters behave. That's why it's really important to know your setting, not just to have it sort of a, a blank space, um, quote Taylor Swift, sorry, never mind, um, but rather something specific because it's going to affect how your characters behave. You behave differently in a classroom than you behave at home. And even at home, you probably behave differently at the kitchen table with the rest of your family than you do in your bathroom. Um, you know, singing in the shower, you probably would not do that at the kitchen table. Maybe you would, maybe you're weird. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> the point here is that your characters will change their behavior based on the setting, where and when they are. Um, and that leads to another concept, which we think of as style. Different plays have different styles. This is something you may have talked about before. Some plays are very realistic, have a very naturalistic style. Some plays are very different. If you do a Shakespeare play, for example, the characters speak in poetry. That's not naturalistic at all. Um, if you do um, a Commedia dell'arte piece, you may have very sort of exaggerated physicalities and you might wear masks. And all of these are the things that we think about in terms of style. But style is an outgrowth of setting. Um, you're creating a world when you create the setting, a where and a when. And that world may have certain rules. Like in the world of Shakespeare, everyone happens to talk in poetry. Or in the world of Commedia dell'arte, everyone has a very exaggerated physicality. So when you're thinking of your setting, your where and your when, realize it's going to affect how your characters behave, and that may lead to a style. A very obvious one. Um, if you know uh, Henrik Ibsen, he wrote a play called The Doll's House. Um, it's a realistic play. In fact, it's considered the first realistic play. But it was written, it was contemporary uh, at that point, uh, which was in 1892 it was first written. Uh, now we look back, and 1892 is over 100 years ago, right? So that the way characters talked and the way that they moved and the way that they dressed was very different. So we would think of that movement and that way of talking as a style. Um, but it was just how they acted realistically in that time and that place, that where and that when. So when you are creating the setting, realize it's going to affect how your characters behave and that is going to lead to a certain sense of style, whether it's realistic and modern or whether it is sort of classic and old fashioned and all of those kind of things. Um, the other thing to keep in mind about setting is that you as a playwright have a couple of options. Um, you can either describe the setting, that is the time and the place it takes place in great detail, um, and let the designer and the director determine what they put on stage to represent that, or you could take control of that yourself and say specifically what you want on stage. That's the difference between setting and set. The setting is where it takes place, say a classroom in 2015, that's the setting. The set is what you put on stage to represent that, because you probably will not put every single object that is in this room on stage. Um, instead, you would pick a few things that would represent it. Maybe it's a whiteboard and some tables, maybe you hang some fluorescent lights, but you typically are not going to bring in every object of the setting onto stage. Um, so the things that you do put on stage to represent that is going to be the set. And as a playwright, you can do either one of these things. Um, at the start of your script, and we talked about this in the manuscript format video, um, it always starts with a setting block. That's a little square where you describe what is on stage as the curtain or the lights come up. And in that setting block, you can either describe the setting, um, a farmhouse in Iowa in 1860, and just leave it at that and let the designers decide on the set. Or if you want to be hands-on, you can describe the set. Um, a kitchen table next to a window with red checkered gingham curtains, a shaft of sunlight comes in from stage left. You can be as specific 
or as general as you want. As the playwright, you get to make those decisions. But you always want to start that play um, with either description of the setting or description of the set. And every time you go to a new location, if your play has multiple scenes in it, you want to start with a description of that new setting or that new set um, so that we know exactly where it's taking place. Again, if it's not on the page, it's not on the stage. Uh, so unless you tell us what's there, um, the actors and the directors won't know. So if it's important that there be, for example, a gun over the mantelpiece, or there be a bowl of red cherries sitting on the kitchen table, you want to make sure that that is made clear in the setting or the set block at the beginning. Thanks.